Hello, Scorpio sun signs, rising signs and moons. This is your May Tarot Scope from me, Kim at Expressions of the Universe. And so we have a full moon in Scorpio on May 7th. And it will be hitting you in the sixth house. So what this is telling me is that you need to be changing up your daily routines, paying attention to the details of your health, uh, taking that more seriously, probably uh, changing up those routines. And um, as far as like, what are you eating? Are you sleeping well? Are you getting enough exercise? What are you feeding your mind with? So all of that is so important for the Scorpio sun signs, rising signs and moons. It's time for you to make big full moon wishes, clearing out the clutter, new beginnings. This is like, um, you know, part of your half birthday year, so to speak. So that's the sixth house for the full moon. Now the new moon in Gemini on May 22nd will be highlighting your third house. So this is communication um, improving communication. This is also, ooh, you know, I gotta, I gotta pick that up. Oh, all right. We're going to save that for a minute. Um, possibly making small trips or having an effect on your small trips. And I've been saying to everybody, you know, paying attention to your automobile, if you own one, and your devices, especially because we have a lot of retrograde energy right now. Um, yeah, so hopefully by the time the new moon comes on May 22nd in Gemini, you will be able to get out there and get out, get out and about a little bit more than you have. All right, so let's uh, turn this over. I pre-shuffled most of the cards to save us some time. And the sun card is coming out. So this is really great. This is a good indication that this full moon is going to give you a boost of energy. You should be having a boost this month. Now, I will say with the sun in Taurus, it's opposing you. So... You know, the sun will be in Taurus. Yes, this is your full moon. However, there will be some tension. Um, this is you coming into your destiny. Freaking dogs. Sorry. Um, a lot of changes are going to start to take place, whether it's with your body, your mind, or your spirit. All right, so let's get down to it. We have Neptune. So Neptune rules Pisces, which is a sister sign of the Scorpios. And, you know, this is about you dreaming big, um, tapping into an artistic side to yourself, a creative side. This is you getting in touch with the other side for sure, because the veil will be thin during your full moon. Um, if there's something that you need to say, I'm hearing to a loved one that has crossed over, now will be the time to do it. The underlying situation is Pluto, and a lot of people are getting this card. This is a time of change, endings, transformation, so that we can have new beginnings. So, uh, let's see what will be transforming and changing. I think it's going to be um, big for, the, for yourselves. Now, with the full moon being in the sixth house for Scorpios, it will be imperative for you to pay attention to yourself and uh, the way that you feel, your overall health, and that would be your mental health, your physical health, and even your spiritual health. health. Um, huh. And I can't make this up. 
Whenever I talk about where the moon placement is for a particular sign, it always seems to show up in these cards. And here we have the sixth house. So any of you Scorpio sun signs, rising signs and moons, please start moving and grooving. Uh, increase your, <clears throat> your, um, what's, your physical activity. Thank you. Thank you. Couldn't get that out. Um, be mindful of the supplements that you're taking. Make sure that your body is getting everything that it needs. And another card just fell. Okay, so now we have Jupiter. This is about expansion. So I'm hearing uh, really pay attention to what you're eating because when the Jupiter card shows up, a lot of times it's expansion of our waistline, but this is also an expansion of your outer world. Things are changing and crazy. Ugh. This card's going to go with it. So it's the second house. There could be some big changes in your home environment, the things you value, your material, tangible things, your money. Um, but that would be an expansion. So I'm hearing... For some Scorpio suns, risings, and moons, this could be a new job opportunity. But definitely pay attention to um, what it is that you're putting into your mouth. A lot of times Scorpios uh, emotionally eat or emotionally starve themselves when, when their emotions are running high. So it's you're either going to go one side or the other. You're either not going to eat enough or you're going to eat way too much. Um, pay attention. Okay, so let's see what the confirmation cards are. Okay, so we have fourth house, roots, and this is on top of the Neptune card. This is on top of the card that I said, reaching out to others on the other side. This is about reaching out to your ancestors on the other side, paying attention to your dreams during this full moon, um, as you can have some visitation from your loved ones on the other side. This is also about thinking about the hidden things. If you're having emotional issues, Tapping into where it's coming from, where it originated, and it would be from your roots, your ancestors, maybe even going back generations. Um, and you can pick up those answers through a dreamlike state. Now, on top of the Pluto card, we have fifth house. Scorpios are getting like a wide gamut. Usually it's contained within one or two houses. But what's transforming is you and your thoughts about romance, thoughts about uh, having fun, getting out and playing, not taking life so seriously, focusing a lot more on the self. This is also connected to children or that childlike um, energy, mentality. Now, on top of the sixth house card, we have the ninth house, faith. So interesting because, you know, Jupiter does rule the sixth, uh, the ninth house. So here we have expansion again. This is expansion horizons, uh, changing up your daily routine as far as um, getting out, maybe getting out and about, taking a little bit of an adventure. With the new moon being in your third house, this is me giving you permission to take yourself for a drive now and then. You know, there aren't any restrictions um, in most cases, depending on where you live. And I'm hearing coastal. I'm, I'm thinking about drives up and down the coast, um, whether it's, you know, whatever coast you're on getting near a body of water because that would really help you to connect. And on top of the Jupiter second house, we have Saturn return. Um, and so this is 
trying to think. Saturn return, it's about the rules. So expansion, the money, the values, material, rules, age, chronos, time. This is telling me you need to be patient um, if you are looking for more money, if you're looking for a new job. Be patient because, you know, we're in crazy times, but something new is definitely coming your way. Oh, darn. I left my one deck that I've been using out there, so, but I can use this. Same, same concept, same deck. So, let's see what's actually tied to this. Let's cut these. Forgot to bring it back here. All right, so we have the world, and this is what is coming up, um, but it, it's actually in a reverse position. So when it comes to the fourth house, Neptune and the sun, what is going on right now? Your world seems very small, very confined, um, and this is partly why I think that there should be an expansion, expansion of the mind, um, and you know, stop thinking inside the box. See the bigger picture. Now, on top of Pluto and the fifth house card, directly related to romance. So now I'm picking up, you know, now this might resonate with some of you, or not all of you, that somebody, a Scorpio sun sign, rising sign, or moon, has been horribly heartbroken. This is usually an indication of a love triangle, that there was somebody else involved. And it doesn't even always have to be a person that took your love away. It could be a job, you know, the job won over the, the romance. Uh, some other obligations, some other distraction, I want to say. Um, and that's where there's going to be a big change or a big change is coming, an ending is coming. So you can take that uh, in one of a couple of different ways. Endings, changes, transformation, new beginnings. It will be surrounding your romantic life. It could be surrounding children. It could be surrounding uh, the pleasures of your daily life. And some sort of triangle, love triangle, and it doesn't have to be a physical person. Um, it could even be a mental thing or a job that takes your lover away. Like, you know, the priorities to be with you just aren't there. Or this could even be you leaving a situation because you're just not feeling it. Um, it's not worth your time and commitment. On top of the ninth house and the sixth house, we have the Empress. And so this is saying you need to sit on your throne as if you are the queen of your kingdom or the king of your kingdom. Um, this is also, oh, shh, sh there's somebody coming up to my door. Sorry. I'm hoping it's a package that I've been waiting for uh, for nearly a month. Anyway, I apologize. You know I'm doing this live and I'm not going to take the time to cut it out or re-record it because, you know, I just won't get that same energy. But this Empress, um, it's interesting because she's sitting peacefully in her garden. Now this is also feminine, gentle energy. Uh, I'm seeing abundance and life and prosperity. This is saying go outside of yourself and um, get into nature for some of you. I'm also seeing the Venus sign. I am also seeing um, forests and mountains and streams and fields of flowers and also this is about taking back your own power especially when it comes to that sixth house energy hmm on top of Jupiter the second house and Saturn now this is interesting 
because this energy really has been ruled lately by Capricorn. Um, it's about the, the wallet, the money. It's about having things. And the devil is coming up. So this is about temptation, addictions, obsessions. Um, being overly obsessed with what you have. Being overly obsessed by a dollar amount. Um, this is also talking about breaking the rules. Oh, there's so many things. And also being chained to a situation or a person in which you want to break free. And that's where that expansion from Jupiter can also come in. All right. That is crazy. You Scorpios have a lot going on right now. Um, I'm really mostly fixated on this pile with the devil, Saturn, Jupiter, and the second house. Um, and I'm picking up a lot of information, a lot of energy, and it's just, uh, it's talking about real estate pieces of land also in addition to money. Um, and don't be ruled by the dollar. You know, I'm hearing money is the root of all evil. So I don't know how that's going to resonate with some of you, but um, it's not always all about the money. Your crystal card for the month. Let me come in here a little closer. It's Tiger Eye. It's about balance, but whenever I see Tiger Eye, I always think of protection as well um, and mirroring back to other people. But getting into balance, and I'm also hearing that's part of what the sixth house is. Um, I'm also hearing business ventures surrounding possibly health-related items, um, yoga, exercise, uh, doing some sort of venture around that, especially with the ninth house and the expansion on money. So for some of you, that could, that could be... That, could be your theme. Your animal totem. I love this. Um, <laughs> it's buffalo spirit. And it says an abundant universe will provide. It's very Taurian energy. Very much like Taurus the bull. In a sense. But even on a grander scale. And this is saying do not worry about prosperity and abundance. Because it is all around you. It's coming. You have to just get into the right, right mindset. All right, so no place like home, but it's in the reversed or protection position. And this is saying to me that you, um, you may be needing to make some changes in the home. You may not be feeling like your home. That could be part of the fourth house card that came up. Um, this is saying you could also be changing homes. Uh, there could be a lot of changes surrounding the home. Your shamanic card, it's the ancient ones. This is definitely going to go with that fourth house energy once again. This is tapping into your ancestors, your ancestral help, your spirit guides that are on the other side that are part of your ancestral lineage. Um, the Ancient Ones also speaks about tapping into that inner wisdom that's going to be coming to you in that dreamlike state. Your Angel card, it's creativity, and I love this. So, allowing your creative juices to flow and, um, sorry, I can't talk. Um, allowing your creative juices to flow so that you can create something new and interesting and bright, a new adventure, a new venture. Um, this is saying, I enjoy my creative powers and I use them for the highest good. So, uh, Angel Wisdom reminds you that you are a co-creator with the divine. I'm going to go back to the Buffalo card. So if you're feeling a sense of lack, things aren't coming in quick enough, things are very slow, um, connect with that higher sense of self. 
to allow that abundance and prosperity wisdom to come in so that you can not freak out with a lack mentality, a lack attitude, because that'll just push things away from you um, and delay things. <clears throat> All right. Oh, I like that. Oh, I like this. I don't remember ever seeing this card, but it's commitment. This is talking about, and we're going to go back to the Pluto card, the fifth house, and that three of swords card. Commitment is talking about some sort of proposal. Uh, this would be a romantic proposal, possibly two people getting back together again, rejoining, reconnecting, recommitting. Um, this could be the beginning of a great partnership, whether, you know, it's in love or business. And then your final card, interesting. I always like this card. Um, it's the bard. He's the storyteller in, of Celtic times. He created music and poetry and beautiful writings and beautiful stories. And this is telling, this is talking about more creativity um, and the enchantment of storytelling. So this is really saying to expand and open up your mind, believe in fairy tales, believe that the fairy tale can happen for you if that is what you are wanting. That's all I have for you, Scorpio, Sun Signs, Rising Signs, and Moons. If you like this video, please share it with your friends. Comment me. Let me know what you thought about this. I feel like I was picking up on a lot of different Scorpio energy, like little bits and pieces for each of you. So take what resonates, leave the rest. Be sure to check me out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest, and my website at expressionsoftheuniverse.com. Um... And be sure to subscribe to my channel so you know when I'm putting out new videos. Hit my head right there. Click the bell. Click subscribe. Click the bell for the notifications. And then you're done. Until next time, have a great month, Scorpios.